Okay, part three of the vehicle bug out kit nut and fancy project. Thank you so much for your support for watching this video series from start to finish, for subscribing, for hitting that notification bell, for being a donor. Special thanks. Tactical Doodle is here. We are in the frigid warehouse talking about some very important and interesting things like this. You ready? You ready? So you made the decision to abandon your vehicle. Your vehicle was destroyed. The infrastructure, i.e. the roads, are not working. You cannot get home any other way than by foot on your own without any external support. All EMS, all police services are non-functioning. We talked about that a lot in part one, philosophy of use, right? It's foundational to what we're talking about here. Watch part one, POU part two, and this is part three as we dig into the actual nut and fancy V-Buck. There you go. What? V-Bucks? V-Bucks. I didn't know that was a thing. Comment V-Buck down below for 1,000 V-Bucks. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's like $2. Fortnite? I think so. I don't even know. I'm not cool enough to know that. Yeah. Okay, back to our scenario. And as a review, remember, we are kind of accounting for worst case. In my build, I did a kind of a backcountry build, a rural build, if you will, not an urban build. I'm hiking 100 miles is what I've said in the other parts. And I'm accounting for seven days of travel, maybe a little bit more, but I'm saying seven is the median. Okay, you had a point too. If, if you're an outlier in an urban area, you could actually be hiking quite far. That's how most people commute that I know. They live kind of out in the sticks, not really, but kind of. So they're not in the inner city? No. Okay. They, they live Good out point. either in suburbia or even further out where you can own livestock, that type of place. But they have to drive in to the Metroplex every morning. So 100 miles, is that's a realistic window for being in the center of hell and being able to maybe you meander your way out. There you go. Okay, so the point we want to make right now is you've decided to skedaddle, you're gone. You've applied the philosophy that I discussed in part one, and that is you're not gonna be in a group, right? Be solo if you can. If you are with someone else, highly selective. You have to be reliable, you have to know they're squared away. You don't really have time, resources, or energy to take care and wipe people's nose and butts. Yeah. You're trying to get to where? Your destination. You're not trying to fight a war, you're not trying to get even. You're just trying to be stealth. You're trying to be gray man as you go towards your destination. Let's stay laser beam focused on this because it will always come back and, and focus our build, focus what we're trying to do. So you made that hard decision, that hard call. And let's say you're alone, we'll make it easy. You're not with your wife, you're not with your girlfriend, you're alone. And you wanna get home, it's 100 miles, you start hiking. I wanna talk a little bit about the psychology of how you're gonna feel. It might freak you out a little bit. Now, when he was a little boy, I used to take him out, this is, you know, uh, TD, my son, I used to take him out in the woods and he used to get freaked out because little boys do. They're not used to being out in the woods. I took him snow camping, backpacking, all kinds of trips. Do you remember that one trip we took up to uh, the lake that one time and you were freaking out as we're like hiking? two in the morning on the way back down. Yeah. Morning. And it was yeah. raining. Yeah. And it was raining. And... He was crying and he's like, this is awful. I can't do it. And I just stopped everything. And I just took him in my arms. Do you remember this? Yeah. I hugged you and I did what my dad did. And I, I just calmed him down. I said, listen, this is not a big deal. We're going to get through this. It's uncomfortable. It's wet. It's cold. And I gave you the option at that time. And you yeah. might have to do this too. I said, listen, we can build camp right now. And I'm okay with that. And in the morning, it's probably going to not be raining. It'll be sunny. We can hike out then, or we can just man up and we can continue to hike. I know it's late. This hike took a lot longer than we had anticipated. The conditions were rougher. The terrain was steeper. We had bad weather and we were in heavy brush. And I said, your choice. What did you choose? Press. That's what he said. He goes, nope, let's hike. And he sucked it up and his whole mental attitude from that point after changed and he decided to suck it up. And you were as happy as could be when we reached the truck. You remember that? Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, so we turned the truck on. He was soaking wet. You know, he had rain gear, but his feet were wet and it dripped in. And it's hard to stay dry. I don't care what kind of gear you have when it's raining heavy as it was. 
Let's go back to you, your high cow. Will, will you start to cry? <laughs> Um, maybe it's a weird thing that you're doing because I don't know if you've ever done anything like this in your life. I have, I was trained in the military for evasion. They talked about the psychology there. I've done it personally. I've done a lot for TMP. I've been out in the woods a lot. I'm not going to say it. I'm the ultimate outdoor expert. I'm not, but I am going to say that I've learned how to kind of relax. Okay. And maybe you're in an urban environment. You're going to have to do the same thing. Once you get away from people, you have your VBOC with you, find a place and just sit down for a minute and just relax and drink some water and think things through. What's your, is your game plan correct? Is there a different destination you'd want to go to? Perhaps not your original intended destination because of different factors, broken up roads, violent crowds, uh, fires perhaps, fire smoke. Lava flows, any kind of things could make your initial plan not work. Excuse me, still working my cold. Think things through when you're calm, not on the run. And then once you're collected, you have a plan, know that you can make it. You have to believe in yourself. And that's another thing I really want to drive home in this series. And actually throughout of all TMP, I've said this over and over again, be positive. Don't be negative. This is another reason you don't want to travel in a crowd because a lot of those people you would be with are probably going to give up hope. They're not used to being away from a, a societal support structure. And so they're freaking out. They're like, oh my gosh, the end of the world has come. I don't know what the situation is. I'm just drawing what they would say. You want to be around people who are positive. Always you want to say to yourself, I will make it. Okay, repeat after me. I will make it. Maybe you're, you're not in the best of health. Guess what? You're still going to make it. Maybe you're in pain. Guess what? You're still going to make it. You have the supplies with you. You've done your preparations. Believe in yourself. That is huge. Give your frog example wow. real quick. I wish I could remember the numbers. There was a, a, a pretty well-known study about uh, like how long it would take for rats to give up. Oh, rats, in a sorry. Yeah, they had like, a, yeah. you see the picture all the time, containers they would put rats in and see how long they could tread water. Mm -hmm. And I think the average is like 29 hours, just right. normal until they, they give up and then they die. Well, they took another group where they would pick them out at about 25 hours or so. And that would tell the rats, hey, I'm going to be rescued. And it turns out that group that was rescued before would be able to tread water the next time. I think it was 50% longer, so like 40 wow. hours or something like that. So as long as they thought hope was there and help was coming, they would be able to hold out a lot longer. Really good point. Yeah. Um, I think that, granted, it's rats, but I think the psychology is basically the same. If you give up hope, I don't care what your preparations are, you're going to be done. They have rescued people 500 yards, sometimes even less. I, I mean like 50 yards from major roads that were uh, found dead of hyperthermia. And they had supplies with them. They weren't thinking clearly. They panicked. I've talked about this in my other survival videos. Uh, and they didn't realize that help was right there. But since they didn't sit down, take a drink of water, relax, think clearly, they made really bad decisions. Uh, some, once they got hyperthermic, they found them with their clothes stripped off. They lost, they had like supplies with them. They had fire making supplies, jackets, rain gear, and they're dead. In this case from hypothermia, but other, for, uh, for other reasons too. Don't be that guy. Okay. Be hopeful. Be strong. Now, part of the foundation for this is you having your gear. And once you get your VBOC, just like your bug out kit, your day hike survival kit, your pilot egress kit, <laughs> not really applicable to most of y'all, but I did do a series of videos on that. And then also your urban survival kit. It just gives peace of mind, right? Do you have a bug out kit? Yeah. Is it ready to rock and roll? Does it give you a peace of mind? Yeah. Yeah. So he, he can roll out the door with his bug out kit, which he helped me build. We uh, built it together, weaponized, has everything in it. Go watch my BOK series. And once again, like I said in part two, you can actually take a, you could build a full size roller bag style of bug out kit and you'll be pretty well prepared for VBOC, except the weapon. I think the weapon is 
very minimal in a bug out kit because you just don't have SAWC. And also the container because the supplies are more extensive, integrated food and such. Uh, I don't know if you could carry it for 100 miles on your back. I, I've shown you in the uh, BOK series, I showed you the deer cart. That is amazing, but I don't think most of y'all are going to strap that into your SUV. There's no room. Okay, on we go. That point has been made. Don't forget it. I wanted to show you this because I showed you the saw viver in part two. This is a great saw. It's basically a reference standard for a wilderness backpacking emergency survival saw. However, it's no longer made. You can't find them anymore. Maybe on eBay you might see them here and there. Uh, but it's also kind of special. I don't know if you'd want to relegate it to your build, would you? You yeah, have a saw viver and you put it in your V-Bock and there it stays for the rest of your life. It's essentially gone. It's gone. Instead, I'm going to recommend more cost-effective things. Uh, I did talk about this one, and this is a very cool saw. This is a Silky Gomboy, shown in other videos. So why have I come back to Silky saws? Because I think they're cost-effective and they work for what you want to do. Okay, you're not going to be building a damn cabin out there, are you? Hopefully not. Firecraft, maybe some shelter craft. Here's the Gomboy. This is the Outback version of it, and I think it's pretty cool. Link below taking you to Pro 2A Optics Planet. I'm sorry, no, Blade HQ in this example. I don't think OP has it. Now, sometimes in my links, I'll give you, I, I like to use OP a lot because they're Pro 2A. Occasionally, you'll see Amazon links too. So if I can't find it somewhere else, I'll use my Amazon links. Please use my links because I like buying food. But look at the curve on this, pretty cool. I didn't have it in part two, but here it is. That is the Outback Gone Boy. Cool. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on this, here's another one. Show them that one. A little cheaper. Yeah, so this is called the New Trip Folding Safety Saw. And it's the same concept. It's it's like below $10. Yeah. Not as high quality as that Silky Saw we just said. And it doesn't have the span. But again, for just knocking off a few limbs for building a fire, getting inside dry wood. Remember all those fire building exercises that me and TD did years ago, some other crew members, it's worth it. So it's gonna be lighter, more compact, very, very easy to slip into your pack of choice. Once again, I'm looking at a Kelty Red Wing 50. And by the way, this one's coming out of storage for use in a V-Bock. I could show you a lot of my Red Wing 50s that have a ton of wear on them. But this one's just getting purposed right now. And there's that that pocket I'm talking about. So it just slips like that. Okay, so I'll put a link for this. It's currently called the New Trip. These come and go. They're called different names. They're not the highest quality. They're not. It is locking, but it's a plastic emergency saw. Consider it as such. Okay, another thing that I saw one of my donors say, <coughs> excuse me, and I thought this was really cool. I don't know if I would do it. He said, uh, yeah, dude. In my vehicle bug out kit, I'm going to carry a tomahawk. What do you think of that idea? I like it. I do too. I don't know if my system can take the weight, but I do like it a lot. One of my choices would be this one, the Cold Steel Vietnam Tomahawk. Right? Very cool. And that donor was talking about vehicle rescue. Mm -hmm. The ability to break windows easily maybe go through some metal to get to people who may be trapped. I like that. I think it is also a formidable weapon. I like how his is totally altruistic and I'm like, you could threaten a lot of people with this, so it'd be good. <laughs> well, again, we have a lot of unknowns in our situation right now, right? My scenario is more realistic. <laughs> it could be, it really could be. We have a lot of unknowns, we don't know how many people we would confront, and heaven forbid we'd have to use a tool like this to defend ourselves. But yeah. also, firecraft and sheltercraft. Yeah, there's a reason a hatchet. fire chiefs respond to domestic calls with their fire axe in hand. Oh, interesting yeah. point. Because they may have to use it for self-defense? No, they just show up and it calms down. Oh, I the, see. The shrieking and yelling when you see like a tall dude with an axe. Hey guys, what's going on here? Yeah. Can I help you? Hey, so you guys having a beef? Problem. What's going on? What's Good this point. shit about? So it's a psychological yeah. show of force. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so to be realistic, I don't know if I would incorporate this in my V-Bock. However, you could, and if things got like too heavy, ditch it. 
Remember my theme of disposability. Uh, all this is disposable, your vehicle's disposable. Our idea is to stay alive. Get back to our family. That's what we're trying to do. Really good sheath with this uh, cold steel. Vietnam Tomahawk. I reviewed this separately many years ago. That review still plays. Remember, my reviews are designed to last for 45 years. I've taped this with athletic tape. Recommended in your vehicle bug out kit? Absolutely. You'll have to decide if you can take the weight. And on we go, digging into the Red Wing. Here comes something very exciting, very new. We are going to have to spend some time on this. I don't want to get too far into the weeds with this. So I want to kind of keep things moving, okay? A 1992 Sega Genesis with yes, all that's right. three classic Sonic games. <laughs> all three. Okay. Which were those games, by the way? I have no idea. I don't even know if there are three. I only know yeah. the one. What we're going to really talk about is a pre-built first aid kit. Now, I would think this would classify as perhaps a level two. It's better than a level one plus, which I build all the time, which we carry all the time on our motorcycles, for instance. It is a Venture Medical Kits Trauma 2.0. This one in FDE, link below. My overall take, if you don't want to watch me, us go through the kit and give our opinion to how it is, is buy it. Okay, one reason I did this is because I do want to give you guys something pre-built. Yeah. I've heard from a lot of TMPers, he has two through the years, they say, hey, I really want to do my own build, level one, level two, level four for a kit, and they just don't have time. And it's also expensive, so don't think you're going to go out and build your own first aid kit and save money. Do you think you will? Where's my, well, I have a box of... Uh, Blood soakers here. I don't know if it's priced though, but they're expensive. Everything's yeah. expensive. You guys know this. I would say for me to do a level one plus kit. Now I'm buying quantity, so it's not going to be outrageous, but I bet you I'm on a level one plus. I bet you I'm spending $30. If I have like a blood clotter in there, maybe more. Depends on what I have, what meds I have in there. First thing I'll say about this kit, it has a fantastic case on it. It is LB compatible, as you can see. It has a little strap there with a fast text buckle on it little uh, strap right here, really good YKK or YKK style of zippers. This is probably made in China, this case, but it's high quality, I like it. Then you got a front part here if you wanna put stuff on there. I do not recommend that in your V-Bot. You got a morale patch area here, you can throw stuff on there, we haven't done that. Breaking inside, you have an instruction manual. I do recommend this. I love how it has this. Even if you're a first aid guy, he's an EMT, even if you're a first aid guy, you may look and go, oh, you know, how do I handle this particular injury, this particular thing? Uh, maybe you need a refresher. It, I don't know if everything is in here, but it has some important things in here, probably the ABCs, right? Is that what you guys are still calling? Yeah, it's kind of like a you're in the backwoods type of thing. Backwoods keep you alive long enough to get to a hospital, which is 95% of medical products out there. Also, this could be used on you. Yeah. The dude using your kit could be a complete non-medical dude or dudette. And this is what they would go by to help you. You're the injured one. Think about that. If you want to pause this, these are the contents in this uh, Molly trauma kit. Oh, I thought there's a 2.0. There's a 1.0 that I have. But I think there's a 2.0 out there too. There you go. Uh, looking in here, we've got some shears. you got a finger splint in there, a syringe, safety pins. All good. I like this. Uh, actually, the shears are good. They're kind of like the first aid style of shears. I did not test them yet, but they look just to be, you know, your typical pant cutter, pant cutting shears. They should be pretty capable, actually. Then you have a back pocket here. Let's dig in. See what's there. Cloth medical tape right there. Not my first choice for a, a bandage tape. It is a first choice for joint uh, helps. Like if you have a sprained uh, let's say you have a sprained index finger. I think these are fantastic for strengthening that joint. Uh, so it's multi-purpose and it sticks on a lot of different surfaces. Now I notice as I dig in here, they're not packed into sub-plastic bags like I do with my builds. Whatever. You know, the kit itself is considered more or less waterproof. Not dunk proof, but like rain proof. Well, they will be crushed and then exposed to whatever liquids you have because this is all paper. And look at this, you can see, uh, I mean, the quality on this, this first aid bag, I would give it probably three out of five. It's not top quality, but again, 
it's a lot better than my plastic bags that I normally use. Yeah, like in practice, you'd be cramping, you know, you stuff it all down, this yeah. becomes one body, you get this wet one time, and now all this is kind of gross and stuff. Well, together. you're making a case for putting them in sub-plastic yeah. bags is what you're doing. But again, for a V, this is what I'm talking about staying focused. So v -Bock, seven days, we're just trying to get to destination, we're not necessarily long-term with this. And it is enclosed in your backpack, which does give rain protection. On we go with the bandages. I'm impressed. I think this is good. Here's a trauma pad. They have at least one of these. They have some four inch gauzes. Um, actually two trauma pads. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Better than I've seen in any pre-built first aid kit yet. I will say though, this is focused for trauma and I'm saying heavy bleeding. You get multiple four inch gauzes. That's good. You get some three by four. I think that's what that is. Three by four gauzes. These are not the non-adherent types. Get a sterile iPad. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. You don't see that too often. No, you don't. W wound closure strips. So those are like butterfly strips to close a wound. Those are awesome. Yep. You should have a lot of those actually. Hey, firm. Moleskin, which honestly I think is pretty worthless. I've talked about this. I've tried it backpacking when I got a blister on my boot and it always falls off. What I use is Gorilla duct tape, and yes, I have some. Believe me. By the way, he's catching what I have. He's coming down with his own sickness. Two by twos, excellent. I would give this one side mm, four star. That's four stars so far. Anti drone blanket. Uh, anti drone bl blanket. Uh, well, I mean, survival blanket. That's no. a side road. We'll take later. But this is a blanket. Uh, I have better ways to stay warm, but this is included in the kit. It is a way to reflect body heat. Kudos. And it's compact. Look how thin that is. Plastic glove. I'm sorry. Sterile gloves. Large size. Large size. Big win. That's the finger splint right there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we showed them that already. Little tweezers. Tweezers. Then we're going to break into this side. I would guess this is the pharmacy side of it. And I would guess it's probably fairly weak. Now, I could just go through and read the ingredients list and just call it good. We could just rip through that very quickly if we wanted to. I think you guys want to see actually what's in here. I'm not going to go through every med here. I'll just tell you what I see. I see uh, some alcohol swabs. By the way, I added those. No. I don't think those were in there. I just yeah, threw them in because I had room. Yeah. Then we have, I think this is like bacitracin or something like that. Yeah, antibiotic, triple antibiotic ointment and you get separate vi uh, packets of that. I think that's a great idea. Pain reliever right here. Several of those. What's this right here? Viagra? Look at that. Wow. It's more aspirin. It's all Extra over the strength stuff. Viagra. Just kidding. It's uh, some type of pain thing right here. More. I think it's pretty light on the pharmacy, to be honest, but I have a supplement I'm going to show you, what and you guys may like that. Any over-the-counter thing is going to have to kind of skip right. on medical interventions. Right, they have to be very light because they don't know who's buying, buying the kid if they have medical allergies or whatever. Some butterfly closures. There's actually four of those. That's pretty impressive. A ton of, look how many band-aids they give you, dude. Huh. That's pretty good. That's, That's better than most kits I've seen. This is in the Adventure Medical Kits trauma kit. Tiny bandages. Uh, no, that's a butterfly strip, I think. Right there. Okay. And then moving on, that was that part right here. And then you get some roll-up gauze that you could tape in place with that fabric tape. Uh, that is important. I think roll-up gauze is important. I have used it multiple times in my own first aid emergencies. This is actually an ace bandage, a mini one. I have another one in my supplement, which I'll get to as well. Triangular bandage. Oh, I'm sorry. Those were their alcohol pads. These are mine. I slipped in more. We'll put it all together later. Excuse me, triangular bandage, I showed you that. And then we got an instant cold compress. And then we have, holy crap, check that out, dude. That's pretty cool. Quick, quick clot. Okay, now this is meant for when you have kind of an unrestrained bleeding episode and direct pressure raising the limb doesn't work. It's not something you want to go to immediately because it can get in the bloodstream and it can cause serious problems. In fact, what do they administer when they take them to the hospital? Thrombolytics. And because it can get in the system and yeah. they can have strokes. Yeah, because you're dumping it right into the circulatory system, so it might end up going 
back through the heart and into the brain, and then things get worse. Yeah. It's kind of, this is what I'm talking about. It's kind of a tourniquet. It's meant to get you to a hospital. True. And this is what most medical stuff is kind of built around the idea that you do have advanced care at the ready. Right. I don't know of anyone that really is prepared for, like, no advanced care ever medicine. Yeah. I don't think that's really a thing that anyone wants to think about because the solution is basically you're going to die. That's the key right there. So in our situation and bugging out from our vehicle, trying to get to our destination, things are so bad. The bleeding situation is bad enough that you would either apply a tourniquet or quick clot. True or false? Okay. And maybe your philosophy is different. Rock on. I get. I give you that. But it's not something you want to go to immediately. Oh, I got quick. Yeah. Quick clot. No. Like direct maybe, pressure. Raise the limb. The bleeding will normally stop. Maybe there's a FEMA station with a surgeon. That you don't have any of that. Of you have no Blackhawks coming to rescue you. You have no EMTs. You have no paramedics. Nothing. You're on your own. Here's an adaptic. These are very important for long-term wound dressing. So once you do stop the bleeding, take off that gauze, plat, gauze pad. Put this petroleum-soaked adaptic on and then rewrap it with your i think they should be there should be some more of this by the way it's just one two small rolls yeah. but they have something and the kit's small so they can't put everything in there but wrap it up tape it up and put this on first because when it starts to ca uh, clot and coagulate taking and changing that bandage is going to cause huge pain and problems you're going to restart the bleeding process all over again i always use adaptics and love it and that's the kit fast and furious that's because we don't have a ton of time to cover it i will give the kit overall from what i've seen so far and I, i'll say it's around 80 to 90 bucks i'll give it four stars how about you td oh don't worry about that we'll put it back, back together that, later yeah i don't know like two three around there but he's an emt too what what else could you fit in this small case that you don't have though that's the thing. Everything you don't have a lot of room. Be, this would, is a small kit. I would want some sharps. I would want a scalpel or at least huh. like a small huh. exacto knife. Funny funny you should say that because now we go to the Vent and Fancy supplement, which by the way, yes, is in my V-Bock backpack. Now, I read the instruct I read the ingredients list. I took a peek inside and I go, yeah, it's weak on a couple things. So I threw together a supplement. This isn't my first aid kit supplement. Now, do you have to do this? No, you don't, but it's not a bad idea. And I'm gonna go super quick through my supplement. I told you I didn't like, they only had one uh, ace bandage. I included two more out of my storage. There you go. Because you are walking a long distance, you can sprain, break things, or just have some joint problems. So you probably, when you're attempting to be super mobile for long distances without any medical support, have a couple more of these. Huh. What were you just saying about a scalpel? There you go. <coughs> By the way, instead of this, I actually prefer that Coban stuff, the corrugated. Mm, it's, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't mind the ones I it have. It holds though. and it's more water resistant. Okay, fair enough. I still like that one. Yeah. Anything along those lines will be good. Uh, more alcohol swabs for cleaning, disinfecting. And yes, I have disinfected wounds with them. I don't care what anybody says. You don't do it with alcohol. I don't give a shit. I've just done makes it. makes it scar up more. Yeah, I've done it multiple times. Maybe that's why I'm so scarred. Then when I have some Telfa pads, these are also non-adherent. They're not like the adapt adaptics. They're not soaked in petroleum. These have kind of a different surface to them, but they are technically non-adherent. I think mostly that is true. And what sides do I have? Like three by fours. I put that in there. A couple more large gauze pads. Some three by threes. Put those in. More band-aids, large wound band-aids. That's one thing I think they fell short on. They should have put those in. I put in another bleed stop. So this is Quick Clot, just another brand. I, I'm pretty impressed they had a pack in there though. Yeah. That's one reason I think the pack costs more. It is extremely rare that you would find a pre-built medical kit of that size having Quick Clot in it. And I know we were kind of shaming Quick Clot, but it can save a life if used properly. Again, refer to the instructions in the medical kit. It's going to tell you how to use that, when to use it. It's all in that book. So you don't have to rely on your memory, what we talked about here. Another bandage, another gauze. I have multiples of these. So I probably have, including the kit, probably eight. Then I have a combat style tourniquet in there as well. You guys know how tourniquets work. 
Um, there's a lot of controversy anytime you show a tourniquet. Some will say, oh, that one sucks and this one's better. Have something that's like this. This has a little twisty on it. It's a quality tourniquet. Have I used it for real? No, I haven't. But we'll put a link to this below. I recommend putting it in there because things can get very sour very quickly. Super glue, wound closure. I know some of you guys are probably typing that out. Have it. Now, you don't put super glue down when you're bleeding. It's after you, you stop the bleeding. Um, it's like that's, a liquid bandage. Yeah, it's liquid bandage. So just know that. And then my pharmacy. I'm not going to pull all these out. I'll just show you. I have Advil. I've got fiber cap capsules in there because you might get stopped up in your week long journey. Maybe it's more. Because you're stressed. You're stressed. Antihistamine. I've got allergy. Medica medication in there to stop snotting, which you're probably doing right now because you're getting a cold. It's also 12 degrees in here. True. Motrin, 200 milligram. Notice I label everything. I don't date it anymore because I know it's going to go out of date and I know I'm not going to swap it out. Neither are you. Uh, and then headache relief. I love this stuff. So it has caffeine, mm -hmm. aspirin, and what? Uh, uh, acetaminophen, something like that. Yeah. Those work really well. And then decongestants. That's my supplement for the first aid. Now, you could make the case, you go, well, nothing fancy. You might as well just belt your own uh, because you're kind of there anyhow. Uh, maybe, but I'm impressed with that, that trauma kit so much I'm gonna leave it in my V-Box. Just run the supplement. And maybe you need some special medications that I'm not showing you here. Just build it to what your needs are. Antibiotics and modafinil would be my choices okay if you're Speak gonna be hiking a long that. way modafinil i think it's prescription now it yeah. used to be kind of a gray market let me thing, wipe it's not wipe it's it like, overlay on it's like caffeine but uh doesn't give you the shakes so you can okay still, good you can still shoot good with addition it. so it's a wakeful aid that yeah excellent on we go so that's a down and dirty review of the adventure medical kits trauma kit nice and quick it, it is recommended very recommended in fact I will tell you, I would not mind buying that kit and putting it in my motorcycle. I think I'd be fairly well covered. The one thing I forgot to show you, I said I had this off on the side. I am going to add just a couple more surgical dressings. These are major blood stoppers. They are a little bit bulky, but I'm going to add probably two to three more of my supplement. That way you don't have to use a shirt, a pillow, someone's jacket to stop major bleeding. How about a hat? Maybe some forceps in this while I'm thinking about it. A <coughs> hundred miles is a long way. It's a long way, but it's what am I going to do with forceps? Heavy. Like clamp off an artery? No, like grab stuff. It's Grabbing, weight. It's gra weight. It's metal weight. Yeah, but those tweezers are small and they don't have a lot of, they don't have leverage. We're going to get into the toolkit. Maybe I have something in yeah. there that would help. Uh, I need a hat for sun protection. You might put a boonie hat in there. I probably would recommend that. One of the major reasons I'm doing this is because I hide my huge bald spot. Number two is that it gives me a place to clip on my flashlights, which I covered in part two. Okay, just put a hat in there. And notice this is a synthetic, not cotton hat. That's synthetic, the old TMP hat. This is also a great hat. This is a great hat. This is a condor. Put whatever patch you want on it. I'll put a link to these below if they're still making them. Great hat. On we go digging through. Okay, TD, let me ask you a question. Is it important as we hike along to have some level of observation of maybe threats around us? It's helpful. I called it intelligence, having some level of intelligence. And I'm not talking like being smart, but just information, having information. Where am I going? Is there, is there a group ahead of me? Remember, this is when the world turns upside down is when we're going to be using this kit. I hope we never need, need it. You might need it in a lower level, like getting stuck in the snow and all the stuff you could have until rescue comes with play. You're not hiking, that's, we're talking worst case, okay? One thing you probably wanna integrate, I recommend you spending money on these, are binoculars, or a very high quality monocular, like the doctor monocular I reviewed years and years ago. I haven't seen that forever and ever though. These are very compact Zeiss. These are the lower end Zeiss, and these are 10 by 25s, I believe. Great binoculars. You can go eight power. Uh, eight power gives you a wider field of view. I really like the 10 power if it's a quality optics build because you can get more detail and see what's going on. The lower powers will give you the ability to observe 
at lower light levels. So you decide, I would get either eight or 10 power subcompact uh, binoculars. I'll put some links below to what I think are good. Is it worth you spending money on this? Everybody nod up and down yes. Remember, this is important. So we would be scouting ahead before we went hiking. Is that way clear? If you're in an urban environment, imagine how important that would be to look down streets, to look across in the city blocks and see if there's commotion, if there's violence going on, if there's a natural disaster or the occurrences or aftermath of a nat natural disaster. Well, you don't want to go that way. we got to replan our route. Have an optic. There you go. Now, how heavy are these? I didn't bring my scale here in the warehouse. They're not super light. But, dude, it's firepower versus mobility. These are going in my V-Bock. And they are also in my BOK. -okay. You notice some, some, con some consistency here. Now, we're going to get to how I plan on eating, what I'm going to eat. That's its own part. But here's the pot that I'm going to heat up water with. Now, this is not low quality. I'm not going to lie. This is uh, C to Summit. This is aluminum cookware, and it is legitimately awesome. Not really. Are you sick? Yeah. Like sick sick? Yeah. Dude, that's sad. Okay, so here you go. We're gonna press on though. Sick or not, we still do the project. Aluminum pot, locking handle, lid for more cooking efficiency and saving our very limited fuel supply. Okay, there you go. Really, this is all you need. You don't need a frying pan. You might get away with something smaller. You might go with just a GI stainless steel thing that's super affordable. You go get that from a number of places. You might get like just a cup, just something to heat up water. You kind of know where I'm going with my food situation if I'm saying heated water, right? But you can also heat up some drinks, include the drinks. A warm drink builds your spirits and just makes you feel a lot better. Now, will I always relegate this to my V-Box since it's a higher quality, more expensive piece? Hard to say. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you this now. It's in there for now, and I'm not going to change it. <clears throat> Show them that stove, dude. It's there until the economy improves. <coughs> True. It's a little bit bigger than the old ones. Well, that's what I had on hand. Go look at my micro stove reviews. They were posted about five years ago. I didn't have any more of those. Uh, they're relegated to like day hike survival kits and I'm not pulling them out from those kits. I did have this piece. It's bigger than I wanted. Uh, I don't know the brand. Uh, I bought this, as you can see, in 2019. It's coming out of storage, out of my outdoor system. It has this cool little nylon carry bag. I will, I, I will tell you this, I like how broad the pot support is. Look at that. And as you can see, it's gonna screw onto a fuel canister. So this is not an alcohol or wood burning stove. Look at how stable that is though. Not super lightweight. I would say this weighs eight ounces, something like that. I will swap this out in my V-Bock, I guarantee you. It's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna have one of those micro ones. I have it on order, I just haven't got it, but I'm not gonna wait for it. <coughs> Do you have your chest pouch on right now? No. Okay, and by the way, remember, I'm doing this organically. We're not necessarily going in order on my V-Bock. So, I know I just showed the cookware. We'll get to the fuel canister, trust me, and the utensils, but I'm just digging organically down. This is something really cool I found in Amazon. They're very inexpensive. This is an all-purpose chest utility pouch. How do you like these? It's been cool. Yeah, it is really cool. It's super helpful. So it's multi-purpose. You can carry magazines, knives with it, flashlights, food items, first aid items, all kinds of things. Do I recommend this? Mm, yeah, you're going to see I integrate a very lightweight LBE system in my V-Bock build, but this could substitute for that. You could actually put some magazines in there, maybe a pistol, a couple mags, but it doesn't have a ton of room. And by the way, it's not the most stable thing in the world. There's only like two straps. They cross in the back right here. You can put a patch on there if you want. They come in different colors, but they're inexpensive, dude. They're like 20 bucks or less. For this and put it in your v-box you'll be so glad you did now if you go back in the history of the nut and fancy project you might remember this right i like those do you remember it yeah what is it the ribs yeah the ribs front chest pack so here's my camouflage one we still have it i honestly don't know if the company is still around what they're doing i don't know they came in different sizes i really really love these this one is awfully big it might be big enough for a v-box 
But for hiking, I found I rarely use this. It was just too darn big. But it's much more stable than that one was. They're not really load carrying as much as they are pouches, just to dump yeah. everything in. And I loved having them. When I yeah. use the ribs or any chest pack, even when I'm backpacking, I absolutely yeah. love it. Just dumping stuff right there. Um, so if I can find a link to this or something like it, I'll put it down below. Remember, I always put a ton of links down there Yeah. Uh, to save you money. And I also want to make money for my, my work. Now, it doesn't cost you anything, once again. Nothing. Uh, but I make seven cents per click and maybe it adds <laughs> up and I buy another ribs pack if they're still around. But this is cool. This is worth it. Yeah, I would weight test it, whatever you get. Because yeah. you're probably going to have a thousand different Chinese ones. Right. Load it up and see if the zippers will work themselves free with True. Your weight. True. Uh, one thing you might want to do to stabilize this, I haven't done it with this pack, is these straps will kind of go like this. So they'll go over the top of your shoulders. If you could do a waist strap that came around or even your 550 cord, which I have, coming around and tying it right here, you're gonna get a lot more stability out of it. But dang, son, for the money, for a dispose, basically a disposable pack, recommended. Pretty affordable. Really recommended. So, chest pack. On we go, digging into the nothing fancy v -Bock. Water carrier, this is an old one out of my backpacking system. It's a Nalgene Canteen, it's made out of Mylar. Once upon a year, I labeled it as a wash container. The one thing I'll say about your Mylar containers, hold that up there if you would, Doodle, is they will get little pinholes in them. You gotta be careful. So like if you fold these and they store like this, they can get cracks in them. But this one here is probably 25 years old and I'm still using it in a kit. And it's wide mouth so it'll adapt to my water filter. And here's a water and drinking bottle coming out of my, my system. You can see it's well used. Anything lightweight would work. I would probably steer away from those polycarbonate ones because they're heavier. So the Nalgene polycarbonate ones, they're thick, they're nice, they don't impart any taste, um, they're heavy. Now what I could do to be more space efficient is I could pack stuff in that bottle, right? But I haven't done it yet, maybe I will. Okay, bottle there, you can just throw all that stuff in the mouth. How about this? And I'll show you this here in a sec. I said this in the philosophy of use video, you could actually just build your backpack for like a week long backpacking trip and then add weapons, you can have a V-Bock. More or less. I'm gonna carry more tools probably than I would backpacking and some other variations. I wouldn't carry a first aid kit that deep backpacking with you. Can't speak, would you? So there you go. Like I said, you could just go you know, make a backpack. Now I don't wanna carry a framed backpack in my vehicle all the time. It takes up too much room. I think that smaller sized Red Wing is perfect. I ranted about that in part two. How about this collapsible bucket? Do I really need this nothing fancy for walking 100 miles? Mm, yeah, you do. Here's one reason you need it, because I'm gonna show you my water filter and I have a no kidding water filter because I made a determination for that length of a trip, I will have to be drinking a lot of water. Okay, and in that water supply probably has a ton of sediment in it, floating stuff. You can put it in your collapsible. This one is a Seattle Sports collapsible, high quality, probably gallon and a half bucket, and let it settle, then I filter from the top. Also for bathing. You know, a week long trip is a long time, especially if it's like 90 degrees outside, you're gonna be sweating. Just get some creek water, bathe up. Could you do it in the creek? Maybe. It really depends. There might be people that could observe you there. It'd be better just to get your water, go hide, be camouflaged, and do your hygiene. Do you have anything to add? Well, it's easier to sponge bathe when it's cold. Correct. There's my fuel canister. Notice I, I'm carrying a bigger fuel canister because, well, I just opted for firepower. That's what I'm going to say right there. Opted for firepower. I could get, get away with a smaller one, but, you know, blended fuel canister, blended fuel... These are fantastic. Like I've said before, if they fail to perform in very cold weather, you can get some coals, warm up an area, maybe some rocks, put them on there. I wouldn't put them directly under the canister. And once you warm up the canister to approximately body heat, they'll perform much better. But even in cold weather, these have been great. Now, let's talk about cooking. Some guys will roll in, they go, well, to save weight, maybe I'm going with the Emberlet stove. I talked about that. It can use sticks and you can like use your, your fire tools to process wood. I think that's a valid option, but here's why I did not go with it. 
time. Time, time, time. Energy, another reason I didn't go with it. And also, unknown fuel source. You don't know if you're going to have those fuel sources. How do you know you're going to have wood to burn? Maybe every piece of wood of that size which you could use is completely soaked. I just think you're, you're fraught with a lot of unknowns. I think you're better to, again, in a lot of these situations with a V-Bot, go for fire power. Why would I pack food? I could just hunt a deer. It's the same, yeah. It's the same thing. So here's another thing right here. This is the emergency blanket right here. So this is nothing special, but this is a more durable version of what we saw earlier. This is olive drab because, again, I don't know if I want to attract attention. I'm not gonna unfold that, but you kind of seen these before. What is it, like a six foot by eight foot? Lightweight though, this doesn't weigh anything. There's one of your mom's hairs on me, look at that. Women shed, holy crap do they shed. Always shedding. I have two more of these. These are small water containers right here. Mylar variety, not wide mouth, but I just have them. I got them from a friend and so I'm just gonna use those. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Let me see our time, how we're doing here in the warehouse. Oh, we don't have a ton of time. Ponchos, <clears throat> emergency ponchos. I talked about these in the DSK. I think the USK, I had them too, definitely the BOK. So these are just cheesy, lightweight vinyl ponchos that help you stay a little bit drier. They don't cost much and they don't weigh too much. I have two in there. Okay, hopefully you'll have jackets like we have on. So this is not a Gore-Tex, but this is a very high quality Burton snow jacket. I actually reviewed this. Did you know that? <laughs> reviewed. Um, but hopefully you have, if it's cold outside of its inclement weather, hopefully you've already prepared. Um, I will say right now that I may or may not have a clothing supplement to show you. It really depends on the views. I'm gonna go through the series of the VBOC breakdown. I'll look at the views of participation. If it's super high, I'll give you a uh, breakdown of my clothing supplement. We do not have room in this uh, 50 liter backpack for clothing, unless we make some very hard decisions. Okay, we're talking like, I can't have something like this. I'd have to rustle up a tin can along the side of the road, right? If there is any tin cannage there. Um, first aid kit, probably gonna be smaller. Not gonna have optics. So I'm saying everything's related to everything else. So if you want clothing in the same kit, you can do it, but if it's cold weather, you have bulky clothing, thermal underwear, gloves, maybe face mask, ear protection. Dude, that stuff's bulky. I've been, he, he and I have been multi uh, camping in winter conditions for, I think the longest one he and I did was four days. You were like eight years old. Do you remember that one? Long trip. And it is a lot, a lot of logistics. Okay, here we go. Here is my water filter. Now, again, I'll put below some different links that you can use. I'm going to go again with firepower with water filter. I'm not using a life straw. I'm not necessarily going to count on like tablets, even though I think I do have them integrated into my VBOC. MSR, baby. That's what I'm going with here. Now, you could use a number of different water filters. I'm going with this one. I'm not going to take it out. I've shown it in operation many times. This is something that will fit onto my water bottle that I showed you. Also, my wide mouth now gene mylar container. And this is a legitimate way to get pure filtered water. You don't want to get sick on your trip back home. Does this take weight? Yes. Is it bulkier? Perhaps. It depends on what you're talking about. I don't think this one's that bad. I would say it weighs 14 ounces maybe, something like that. I have like a little scrub pad in here. I think this is a ceramic based MSR. Don't know if they're still making them, but it's in my system. I don't have to go out and buy it again. I recommend you do that whenever you can because it's sacrificial. Here it will stay in the V-Bock forever. Doodle, anything to add on water? Yeah, pills can't precipitate out human poop, so Ooh. filters are basically where it's at. Ooh. 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 Here comes another water bag. I had this in my system. This one's really good. This is a Seeker Ultralight Flexible Container. This one's going to be probably more durable than that Mylar, which is an older technology. This one's a newer technology, not quite as wide mouth, but look at how small that is. How, weigh that and see, tell me if that's heavy or not. That's pretty light. Very lightweight. Gloves. Now I'm wearing gloves here. I often do on camera because my hands are ugly. 
By the way, the watch today is a big penis, 47 millimeter, wearing loosely on my wrist, NHM variety. That's what he calls it. He calls it the big penis. It's like a parnas. 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 It's a parnas. Big parnas. parnas. Great watch. Uh, not sure if they're making this particular variation again. Uh, but have a pair of gloves, new, don't have them all thrashed. These are fast fit by uh, mechanics. They are fantastic. I, I know they're still making these. I'll put links below. I did a glove review this summer. Go watch it. I talk about these. I talk about these. These are a strong suit, second skin. A little bit worn in from loading, shooting out in the desert. These are great gloves. I don't know if they're heavy duty enough for what you're going to be doing though. These are. These are a little bit heavier. These are slip on work gloves. Thicker leather. And dude, for the money you're going to be spending on these, it's like nothing. Get a pair of gloves for working, for keeping your hands warm. Protect your body on your long trip. Time check. We're doing okay, okay. I'm not gonna break into the toolkit. That's gonna be in the next part uh, because we just don't have time. I'm gonna go into these smaller things. I'll go through this one. Uh, here's uh, some sleeping supplies. Believe it or not, I'm a cuckoo. I have ultralight pillows there. Hmm. I had them and I bought these probably years ago. The brand on these is, these are backpacking pillows. They're super lightweight, super compact. These are climate. Oh, dude, I got them for Mass Drop. So I got these for free. So you guys used to use my uh, links for Mass Drop and buy your watches. Thank you very much. So I had some points and I just cashed them in on these. You can see the Mass Drop on top of there. So these are, this is an ultra lightweight pillow. Is it important? Yes, to me it is. I need to sleep. I need to rest. This is a long, stressful journey potentially. So we, we're we're undergoing a lot of stress. Any little thing I can do to increase my comfort level, do it. And those of you who backpack, who have hiked a lot, you kind of know what you like. You kind of know what you can put up with. Just use your experience. For me, that's important. This weighs all of like two ounces, maybe yeah. two and a half ounces. Feel how light that is. It's handy. It's not even made of vinyl. That's like nylon, like rubberized nylon. I have a, an emergency space blanket. Uh, you can see I have multiple layers of stuff because it's important. Staying warm. So I had that space blanket in the trauma kit. I have one here. You saw I had an additional heavier duty one. You got it. And then for this part, we're going to end with the hygiene, hygiene bag that I built for my V-Bock. Should I break into this or should I just talk to it? Let's just talk to it. I think you can see most everything in there. I think so. We mentioned the tablets. He said they won't filter out diarrhea. I made up the diarrhea part, but fecal, whatever you said. Uh, these are the portable aqua, aqua tablets. Now, I do have a water filter, I understand that, but two is one, one is none. Okay, and this is another way. Maybe I don't have time to filter. Maybe I'm on the run. Maybe I'm trying to get away from a group. Maybe I can fill that bottle that I have with creek water and I just put the portable aqua, or aqua uh, tablets in it or something like that, iodine tablets, not the best thing but it will work. When I was doing evasion exercises in the Air Force, our instructor had us fill up our canteens from the rankest, nastiest water. It was below where some cattle were grazing and there was cattle poop in the water. And he's like, yeah, go and fill up canteens. We're like, dude, this is gross. I mean, we didn't have poop right there, but we knew they were in the vicinity and we knew the water wasn't that good. The point he was teaching us is to trust the iodine tablets. And sure as heck, we filled up our canteens, we put at that time, the iodine tablets in it. We let it sit for whatever it was, 20 minutes or so, and we drank out of it, and the water was gross. I ain't gonna say it tasted good. The iodine was gross, but not one of us got sick. Not one of us. Trust the tablets, they do work, but if you want better tasting water, use your damn filter and find a place in a way to filter. They there all you go. came away with a great taste for Indian food, though. Strange. <laughs> Strange how that works. <coughs> you can tell you're not feeling too well because you're, you're quiet in this. I know. Uh, we press on though. Sunscreen, have that in there. Ball powder, I have two types of ball powder. I have a mini talc, which by the way is hard to find. That's an essential really. It, uh, it's essential. Yeah, talcum is hard to find. Uh, it causes cancer for ladies or something. Well, that's when people inhale them is how I understood it. And so they quit making talc and most of the stuff you see to include gold bond is made from cornstarch. Read the ingredient. Cornstarch is worthless. You want Talc. That's what's going to reduce, uh, you know, the friction on your balls, your thighs, whatever. It is very important. Again, we want to take care of our body, 
take care of our equipment and get the heck where we want to go. It's like oil for the human body. It reduces Especially friction men. anywhere you put it. Especially men. Amen. It's very simple. Okay, uh, I do have an old glass case here and I have polarized sunglasses. Have those. You may or may, not, may or may not have those with you when you decide to bug out. Okay, important. Yes. That's when you get a, if you got a prescription, you do Very some important. some cheapo burners and have like a prescription. Right. Sunglass, prescription, safety glass, that. prescription, looking glass. That. Remember, I'm building for Mrs. Nutton Fancy and myself. You see things are pretty much too deep in every situation. Here's another pair of sunglasses uh, contained in a, well, microfiber bag. This is the old peppers, chili peppers, and that is... Uh, a sol uh, polarized, what I'm trying to say, pair that I bought for $15 at the time and actually got a discount off that because I bought them on sale. So they're in there for Miss Nothing Fancy. You want to minimize glare because it wears you out. Perfect style to uh, take a jaunt down to Flavor Town. <laughs> okay, the rest let's just look at. Uh, I got earplugs in there. I've got lip balm. I got Q tips. I have those little dissolving soap pads, which are super cool. Cleaning your hands will be very important. I have eye drops. That really kind of falls in the first aid realm, but I have them in my hygiene kit. I have Neosporin. You saw I had micro packs of that already built in, right, to my trauma kit. Two is one, one is none. I actually have anti antiperspirant, and that is important. I have found in hiking that if you spray like your thighs, uh, maybe your balls and stuff with this, it actually prevents like rash. That's a very tiny canister, so you use, uh, you know, sparingly. Insect repellent, you can also start fires with that. I have just a squeeze type. I have a bad knee, I have glucosamine. Okay, I think that's what it is. Yeah, glucosamine, chondroitin, to lubricate my knee as I hike out. And anything else you need in the realm of health. And I'm not talking like medicine, you can put that in your first aid kit. Um, but you can just throw in whatever you need. That's a variety of stuff that I think it would be necessary on my seven day trip. I rinse container, super duper important like because you can get those. stuff. Yeah, that's an old 35 millimeter film canister. You might be able to buy those on eBay. And again, I showed you those earplugs. But if you're a, a health nerd, I wouldn't really worry too much about like having aluminum hydroxide in your deodorant or any of that because it's a survival situation. The last thing you want is like, dude, I got my beef tallow in here. Check yeah, but look, look how tiny that is, dude. Why not carry it? No, I'm saying there are guys that oh. will refuse. In the, they're so autistic. Oh, about yeah, yeah. Never using the, the naughty I'm, chemical stuff. They're not okay. going to touch it. I'm so glad you brought that up on a couple layers. Yeah. One is the sentiment that, hey, it's an emergency. I'm willing to tough it out. That is the wrong attitude to say uh, and have. I'm saying exactly the opposite. In an emergency situation, when you're not used to the situation, you want to have as much comfort stuff as you can in your kit to make it seem more normal to you, right? And I said that in the BOK series too. We want to simulate normal life as much as we can. Simulate normal life. And if that means having some ball powder, some antiperspirant, and I do have some toothpaste in there. I forgot to mention that. Toothbrush, by all means, you need to integrate that. My point was totally different. It's actually, don't waste your time stocking up on natural stuff, even if you're opposed to I understood to that. Yeah, stuff. I got that. I chemical gonna... stuff ages a lot longer. <laughs> I was going to go to that next. Yeah, um, yeah use the stuff that's long-term, yeah. durable, and stores well. Don't worry about dying from cancer or whatever the <laughs> yeah. other stupid uh, thing you, you're worried about. You have bigger things to worry about, real things to worry about. Yeah. Thank you. Your and... body can take the benzene for a week and a half. Right. Yeah. Right. As you can see, there's a lot to talk about. And I felt like we were talking as fast as we could. I mean, honestly, we're, we're kind of rushing through this, but guys voted, they wanted more detail. More detail means talking about all of this stuff to take place in the next part, by the way. We're gonna go through the tool pouch, the signaling and fire making pouch, some of which you've seen before in the BOK, BOK build, DSK to a certain level, and uh, day hike survival kit. But come on back. And uh, I don't know if TD will be here. I hope he is. I love having him. Oh, yeah, I have little micro tweezers in there, too. They're floating around. There See those go. suckers? Right there, dude. We didn't even touch on bringing your totem. Maybe we'll do it in the next part. A um, lot more to talk about. We haven't even got to the juicy part that you guys love, and that is the gun of choice. How am I going to carry ammunition? How much? What caliber? All that stuff. Uh, it's amazing, really, when you're, when you're looking at all this, that it fits all in here. 
I will say this, all but my food. I have a food supplement. The food and the clothing, could I fit it in here? Yes. Uh, I probably need a bigger pack. Like, I would say probably 20 more liters of size for me. And that's a really big pack. Uh, but I'll talk about how I intend to carry it, what my approach will be, our approach will be, because you need to build your own VBOK as well, bro. And uh, that will be in the next part. So we're done with part three. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and become a donor. Stay there for the rest of your life. Thank you very much. Come back. Very fun to talk about this stuff, and hopefully you never need any of it. Signing off from the very frigid warehouse, TMP.